Hi everyone, this is Megan and I am in one of my courses right now that I just transitioned over for the change to distance learning and I'm going to do a series of some short videos to talk about how to make that transition. The first thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the menu. So you can see here in my class I have some menu options homepage that's where we are now syllabus and calendar online lessons and assignments previous lessons that's all of the stuff we did before um, link to discussion board forums because I do have some discussion boards that I added to my class um, and then the student tools grades email starfish and I gave them a calendar as well so that they could see the due dates and then this link for blackboard help now what we're going to talk about in this video is how to set up your menu options and also how to create a content item that is hidden from students while you build your class. So I'm going to go now into my practice course. This was made for me when um, we first started Blackboard and I had already used Blackboard so I never used this practice class before. Um, so this may be what your class looks like right now if you're not really using Blackboard and that's okay we're gonna talk about how to move from this um, to a more comprehensive class for distance learning and I want to say too there I have other videos on how to like recolor things um, I just color thing my classes that I don't kind of get them mixed up I guess um, when I'm in class, if I'm teaching, you know, a number of sections of the same course. I have another one on how to make a banner like this, but you know, you don't really have to worry about any of that, especially in our limited time frame. But you should maybe consider your menu options. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to rename these so that they have a name that makes actual sense to students. Um, information and content. I found before when I left those names that students didn't really know what that meant or what they were supposed to find there. So I'm going to show you how to rename all of your menu options. Then I'm going to show you how to delete some menu options that you, things that you may not need um, for your class. And then I'm going to show you how to add a content page um, that's hidden from students so that you can build your classes. So those are basically our three goals. Renaming them, um, reorganizing them, and then adding. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to rename is this. I find that the, the information is supposed to be the syllabus. If you click on here, um, a thing will come up and it'll say, I think it's time to add content. Um, it used to say something like um, add your syllabus here or whatever the case may be. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename that. Rename link. And I called mine syllabus and calendar because we had to do a new calendar when we went um, to the distance learning format, but you can name it whatever you want. If you just want it, just your syllabus, you can rename it syllabus. Um, if you just wanted a calendar, you can put that in, but either way, we're going to save that. Um, if you want to put in contact information and just have information where students can contact you um, either by phone or by email, you can do that too. So the next one I'm going to rename is content. Again, you click this little button here on the side and you go to rename link. Then you name it something that makes sense to students. So you can put lessons and assignments. You can put lecture at lectures and homework. Um, you can call it, if you already have content, you can rename it and call it previous assignments or previous lessons, just so that they can kind of see the difference between what you did before and what you're doing now. Whatever you want to call it that you think makes sense for the students. And then you click the little green button to save it. And there we go. You notice for these two that they have these gray boxes. If I hover over that box, it tells me that the link has no content. The next video after this, 
we will talk about how to add content folders. Um, and then after that, we will look at how to add a file, how to add an assignment, and how to add a discussion board or discussion forum. That, speaking of which, that's the next one I'm going to rename. So I'm going to rename this um, from discussions um, to discussion forums so that they know where to go for their discussion forums. Um, you can have discussion forums. They will also be in your content, in your lessons and assignments. Um, but I have found that sometimes it's easier to have a separate link for them. Um, some classes students are used to just going into that discussion forums. So I just have it there for them so that they can get to that, that particular homework a little bit easier. For me, I do not use groups. So I'm going to show you guys how to delete a menu option. You click on the arrow and instead of renaming it, um, we're gonna go to this to delete. And it's gonna confirm with you that you wanna delete and then it's gonna confirm with you again because it really doesn't want you to delete anything where there's actual content. So yes, delete the groups area. And it'll update in a minute. My internet's kind of slow. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now I have this tools and Blackboard help. I'm going to rename the help to Blackboard help. The reason that I rename this um, is so that they can know specifically that this is if they are having issues with Blackboard. Usually if they're in here, they don't even need the help, quite frankly. But if they are, the um, I've had before students who are like trying to get a hold of me specifically and they're like, hey, I keep clicking help and it's just taking me to a Blackboard page. So just so that they know what that's about. I also for them, um, I'm going to show you guys now how to hide a link. I usually hide the tools option. Um, again, we just did renaming and then we did deleting and now we're going to hide. I hide the tools option because if you go to the tools page, which I will do in a new tab here, um, it is filled with a lot of stuff and most of it they don't need. Um, it's loading. There we go. Goal performance, the groups, the journals, the blogs, the calendar, the roster, the email, all of this, these things. So what you can do now, you might be saying, Megan, some of those actually sound helpful and some of them are. But having this whole long list um, is I find not as helpful. So I hide it and you can see the little square here with the link with the slash through it. Um, the item and it says this link is hidden from students. That's basically what that means. The blank box is no content. The box with the slash is hidden from students. So now I'm going to show you how to add links in and we're going to add three things. The first is a content area. That means the stuff that I'm going to be building in my class. So here I'm going to say distance learning lessons. Now, if you noticed in my real class, I called it online lessons and assignments. That is because um, I had some students kind of <laughs> kind of freaking out because they didn't understand what distance learning meant. Um, and um, some of them weren't quite sure what virtual learning meant. When I said that we were going to be just doing our class online, then they they got what that was. So I called this one distance learning lessons and I didn't click this to be available to users. So when I hit submit, it's going to create that content area link. There we go. And you can see nothing in it yet, right? No content and also still hidden. The next links that I'm going to create are tool links. So these are just from that whole long list of tools. These are just the tools that I want them to have. And usually I do three. I do email um, so they can email me directly. I do my grades so that they can see their grades at any point. And I do starfish. So right now we're going to do the grades. 
Having the grades in here to me is very important. Um, and I'm going to make this one available. Especially if you're moving to a distance learning or online format, students really need to know um, where they stand in the class and if they're worried or nervous or anxious, which many of them are given the situation, um, having their grades on there can be really helpful. So I'm going to press submit. And there are the grades. And then I'm going to do one more just to show you guys again. Tool link. And let's put up starfish. Again, starfish is going to be very important because you want them to be able to reach out. This is on Blackboard as well, the Blackboard main page, but it's kind of hidden. And I want my students to know, here's where you go to see your support team, to see any flags that you have, to raise your hand if you need help. Especially right now, um, raising their hand for help for things like food insecurity or housing insecurity, which they can do in Starfish, might be super important. So you want to have that as an option. Now, the last thing here, we've looked at how to rename things, how to add things, either adding a content area or adding a tool link. And the last thing we're going to do is talk about how to reorganize things. So basically, there are two things that I do to reorganize. The first is, you notice this little thing with the arrows pops up, and I can drag and drop all of these to where I want them to be. So I want distance learning lessons and then discussion forums, and then I'm going to have grades, starfish, blackboard help, and then my, tool, my tools link there at the bottom. So that's the first thing. Now the table of contents to me kind of makes sense, right? Um, it, it's in the order that I want it to be. I'm actually going to put my distance learning above my lessons and assignments. So now my second way to organize this is by using a divider. The divider is going to come up and it's just a line. You can see it right here. And I'm going to drag this one to underneath the syllabus. I'm going to have another divider. The reason that the dividers are helpful is that visually it just makes things a little bit easier to see. Um, so now I have my homepage and syllabus, all my lessons and my previous lessons and the discussion forums are there, and then the tools for the students, the grades, the starfish, and the blackboard help. When I go into looking at this from a student perspective, you'll be able to see that some of these will be hidden because I have them hidden right now or because they don't have content. So just kind of to assure you, there we go. Um, yeah, so you can see right here, the home page is showing the discussion forums, the grades, the starfish, and the blackbird help. The other things with no content won't show um, until I put content in them. And the things that I have hidden won't show until I make them visible. So I'm going to go back into my edit mode. And the last thing I'm going to show you is how to make something visible, which is pretty easy. So here, the tools I just hid, let's say I decide that I want to show that link. I just go show link. The box with the slash will go away in a minute. And there it is. And then students will be able to see that. So when you're ready to, after you've built stuff in your distance learning lessons or your online lessons and assignments, whatever you want to call it, um, after you've built stuff in there you and you're ready to go, you can unhide that link and students will be able to see it. And that's it. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to add folders in that content. And then after that, we'll be talking about things like a discussion forum, an assignment, and a file. Thank you. Have a great day.